Then on the other side of things, I'll move to building a manifold. Do you, got, do you tend to do more when I say a manifold, something like that? Or do you do a PVC individual valve? Depends. Varies. 25 mil stuff, I prefer to do it that way. This way, yep. Um, I can't remember what we did. Do you remember what we did when we built our Seagate? Did we use that or did we use PVC? PVC, yeah. No, I thought it was a brace stuff, wasn't it? Yeah. It tends to be like if I'm putting in 40 mil or 50 mil valves or something, that's probably going to be PVC. Individual valves and that, yeah. And that's that's the commercial standard for that as well. So, all right, so. I do like those though, because maybe you can get a valve out easy. Yeah, absolutely. And they do make, just so you do know, they make, they make these in a 40 mil fitting. As well, which is handy sometimes because people go, "That's great from a ball, va a barrel union point of view." If I ever have to deal with it, I don't have to cut PVC out and deal with it again. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's right. Um, these give, I guess, for, across the industry, these products give a, get mixed results. People say these are the biggest cause of a leak, and I'll never use them ever again. I've installed when I was before I was working with WaterPro. I've installed hundreds of these and they don't leak. Obviously you have failure in some of them, but um, there's processes behind how to use stuff and it's once you're taught properly, it, it doesn't leak. So in this situation, and I've used this one for now, obviously because we're doing a three valve demonstration, this part is effectively a three port manifold. These are made from tablet, which we distribute, or uh, Spears make one as well. They're, much for muchness, they're just different brands. They look identical to each other. Um, this is a three station port, so it's actually been pre-molded. All your three valves are perfectly spaced apart. And then all I've done here is I've, they make a, an end cap as well. And inside the end cap, you might see there's a like a purple O-ring sitting in there. That means there's no thread tape required at all on this. We do that up um, hand tight. So that's tight enough now. And that'll handle a thousand KPA. Um, so that's pretty straightforward sort of stuff. Um, you'll see in the ends of these as well, there's an O-ring sitting on that flat face there as well. That's where your um, nipples, for example, this nipple, you see it's also got a flat face. So when we do that up, that's seat seating against that rubber O-ring. And then we tighten this collar up, which pulls that onto it. What, well, while we're talking about all this, when we see a leak for a, a manifold fitting. The reason I see the leaks is that manifold, that's got an O-ring sitting on there, okay? On the nipple, you can see I've also got purple O-rings on either side of the, of the manifold as well. So I'll take that, that's an O-ring that's sitting on there as well. What happens is when that is seated there, and we pull that up, we want this to be the O-ring that's seating because that's where the water would be leaking from is between these two connections here because that's where the water is. When we leave that O-ring on and we do this collar up, it's preventing that collar from getting pulled, pulled tight enough. And people think that this O-ring is actually seated against the, here, but that's not because water is actually seated in a different area. So it's just a common thing. If you've got one of these flat O-rings, I pull the O-ring off the nipple and then I'll use that in that spot there. So then we would do that up and again hand tight and then that's actually tightened now and effectively I'll just throw that into my toolbox as a spare O-ring if anything happens to fail. When we go to a ball valve, obviously I've got that O-ring there and it's on here as well. I'll be able to know, okay, well, I want the O-ring on this side because I don't have an O-ring in my ball valve. So I would leave that O-ring on, providing I can get that all the way up. As you guys might've seen with some plastic to brass threads, it gets tight halfway through. And then at that point, I'm like, well, that O-ring has not even touched that face. So then thread tape would be required. So one thing you do not need is when you go from this into there, because we have an O-ring, no thread tape on those fittings because all you're doing is flaring that, that collar up and it's actually gonna cause that to fail. So all these fittings do not require thread tape at all. 
which is handy to have when you're out on site and as even with the 40 mil stuff, it's the same principle. And a 40 mil valve, most, even if you went to a 50 mil valve, most of the time coming up in 40 mil is sufficient for that small amount anyway, because yeah. you're not gonna have a lot of pressure loss. And then we can just go back up to bigger valves if we had to as well. So it's, the 40 mil stuff's really handy. We've done it with some horse arenas as well um, because they get a lot of foot traffic and movement, the pipes tend to want to crack or the, they'll get shift and then they'll snap and then they're like, we don't want to be cutting this out. So that valve might move. And so then they can come back and just under the collar, dig around, move it back, tighten it back up again and they're okay. And that might only happen once every two years, but as opposed to digging it all out and gluing. That's right. Yeah. 25 million might be trying to cram three yep. valves in the box. Yeah. You can't spin the valves. No, that taking the whole bonnet off and doing all that sort of stuff. That's right. So they're obviously a lot more yep. useful. Yep. Um, obviously, this is the manifold that we're seeing sitting like that. Oh, sorry. Like that. And this is the isolation valve that we're putting on as well. Now, as I said, I've got an O-ring sitting on this side, but I didn't have it on the, I took it off on that side because we're going into there. So for this here, we'd be able to throw that up, tighten up onto the O-ring and we're good to go. Now, obviously we want that to be pretty tight, but we would, would be fine. And the beauty of all of this is we can still shift that on that collar so I can get that sitting nice without having to put thread tape in and muck around with it as well. So. That's effectively your isolation valve. We've got out to your main line from there or back to the water meter or your backflows and what have you from that side of things. Um, then you come to your solenoid valves. Same scenario that we were talking about with your, uh, with the O-rings on these, is we take one of these O-rings off. Reason being, again, is that in these, because of the barrel union collar, it's got the purple O-ring sitting on them. So we, we don't need that to, to be a problem here. However, on the solenoid valve, there's no O-rings on, on there. So we wanna put that side of things with the O-ring into the valve, being mindful that you're putting that into the right um, uh, flow direction, which most of the valves will have an arrow on you for, for you. But if they don't traditionally, the coil is downstream. So it's, that's the outlet normally. Um, then we would just simply, and this is where the beauty of these come in, if this was in the ground and then you were doing this, if there's already valves here on a PVC system, trying to spin this in, you're hitting your next valve and it, you, you just can't do that. So then it's, it's real hard, you've got to be methodical about how you build your PVC manifold, whereas here it doesn't really matter. You can just hold this valve upright and then do that collar up and your valve hasn't actually needed to spin at all. And now our valves on our manifold, ready to go. And obviously we can go out to PVC, poly pipe, drippers, whatever we need to from there. Does that make sense so far, as far as all that? Is there any questions regarding the manifold side of things? Um, now, the next side of things is, and I'll just quickly put another valve on, just so we're across that. The other side of it as well as this is when I was installing, if I knew I was, if I had a plan and I knew what I was about to do, go out on site and I knew how it was all gonna be orientated. This is all getting done at your ute, the back of your ute, so out here, and then you can take this out to site and literally just drop that in as you need to, or have that ball valve just sitting on site like a plumber's giving you a, an isolation point or what have you. And then this manifold just comes back out on site you just do this collar up and it just literally slides straight in. The beauty, and as Scott was saying, is if this valve fails, if that was a PVC built system, to, turn, to take this off, I'll go, oh, I want to turn my valve, I can't go any further. And so what people tend to have to do is take the coil off, take the bonnet off, so you've only got the top of this bit and that allows you to spin it and then you've got to take, still got to dig around all that, and that could be gravel or a concrete paver or whatever else happening, whereas we don't need to, we just undo that collar, undo the, or cut the poly pipe this side, 
lift the whole valve out, deal with what we need to deal with, and put it straight back in again, and all these valves haven't been disturbed at all, which is quite handy. Obviously turning water off before we do that, because as soon as you undo that, water's gonna come out, so. Um, so now we've got effectively our, in this situation, two stations ready to go, and our wire would have been run out into the field, coming from the controller, and is sitting in the valve box with a, a loop ready to go. When we do, this is more from an installation standpoint, but it's handy if you're doing a rewire in a valve box that may have given you grief before, or cables just get shorter and shorter. What we tend to do, and I do this a lot in the golf course situations, is irrelevant of height, but because it's close enough anyway, but I sort of say, if you're standing there, I like to see from the valve box, bring your cable up to your hip, and that's your, like you pull that cable through on a trench and have that up to your hip height. Um, that way then you pull that back in the, in the valve box, you've actually got you know, this much you can kind of work with, not sitting here with this, you know, you do a wire join wrong, now you're shorter, and it's just getting, in five years time, you're like, I've got no cable left, and you have to start digging back to try and find something spare. So what we'd have, we'd have this sitting there, nice and clean, ready to go. If you've got a plan um, as well, and even central control, you can put notes in your systems and stuff now too. It's handy to have these colors noted um, oops, uh, somewhere, not just not just a once off, because obviously if you were you know, undoing them and refixing them and all that sort of stuff, obviously you think, oh shit, what was that color? You don't wanna have to go back to the out to the valve box and retrace the cable back to the first solenoid valve. You can just have this numbered inside the box. They've got Velcro here and in the bags and a lot of the controllers all have that ability. You can just put notes inside even your cabinets, just putting pieces of paper up just to give people enough information. Because um, as I said, 20 years from now, um, and when I used to do audits, that was the biggest problem. That was like trying to find what cable went to where. It was spent longer than anything else. So. Um, So we've got our station valves, same corresponding to what we've already done in the controller, and now these are sitting out on the field ready to go as well. What we tend to see, and the reason I've stripped these back, is there's a couple of options to, to show you how people wire these up. Right, so now, where are we gonna go? Let's treat this one, actually I've done that the wrong way, because that is there. So that's obviously your station manifold, like I said, sitting there. We've got stations one, two, and three sitting there. So that would be my green, my green colored station. AC controllers use an AC coil. AC doesn't have any polarity effect to it. So it means, as you, you may have used Hunter nodes before, the battery controllers, um, where there are black and a red cable. Um, as you see on your multimeters, they can run polarity, so they have a positive and a negative. AC doesn't have a positive and a negative, it doesn't matter which way we go. So hence why you see on these coils, they're both red. Rainbird, both black and white cables, depending on the valves, a lot of the time they're all the same color. And that's the indicator, it doesn't actually matter which way we go here. And you can cross that over with each valve. It doesn't have to follow sort of suit when you're actually wiring them up as well. So when we've got our um, cable, coming into our valve box and we've said, yep, valve one's gonna be green. We can pick one of those two wires coming off of that station. Now, what I tend to see, and the biggest problem with faults out in the field from irrigation joins, uh, people strip like I've just done that, and then they've got, and, and Hunter don't, or all valves don't help themselves in this regard because they do this because you can solder. But you've got that pre-stripped piece there that we take off and people tend to grab these two and do a twitch 
and in the worst situation that's all and that gets put in the valve box and that will last depending on the season probably three to six months before you get valve failure or communication failure because there's obviously that's copper and you've seen the color of copper fittings or copper pipe where it gets that green oxidization that's what's happening and then when this heats up because it's got voltage going into it it acts like a pump in that sheath so water is actually getting pumped back up that so we've seen the what starts here can be 50 meters down is completely corroded and so that cable's done rubbing putting that in duct uh, like insulation tape a little bit better still not great the next side of it is people solder that joint and then put a heat shrink cap on that's completely fine as well that I, as far as a solid connection soldering that and putting a heat shrink on is as good as any other sort of connection however there's irrigation joiners out there as well so what i tend to do is use the 3m 314 wire joiner i'm going to show you a few of these have you guys used the wire joiners before yep cool so pretty straightforward you'll notice on the wire joiners um, they've got three inserts um, and all of them will come with three like all your wire joiners they come in all different sizes they can do little half mil size these will go up to one mil cable and then you can do a black instead of the blue they do a black top one which will do 1.5 mil cable as well depending on how far we need to go as to what size cable we're using the reason they have the three inlets so these units are filled with a, a gel inside them that stops moisture getting into that joint so as we're talking about with that corrosion it stops that moisture getting in so what we do and the reason there's three is because as we were talking about if you've got these are your your stations if your station you've got your wire joint your wire coming in and coming from your valve so this is your solenoid valve coil with the two wires coming off this is your green wire and we're doing a wire join here that's just two wires green in and grabbing one of those stations out of the valve but that common wire is what was linking all the valves up and that's why we have three ports in the wire joiners so then our next station is sitting here which is the yellow so that's sitting there now our white our greens going back to our controller and our whites coming down what we're wanting to do here is that white is connecting into the wire joiner but we're also wanting and i'll jump that over but that white is also then connecting back into this one if that makes sense we've got a we've got a wire join happening here and then we're going to connect our white wire into our white wire and then continue to our third station which was our red so we've then got our white wire going back to our controller now in this situation obviously with three valves you can see here is the white and that is the red and that's the yellow so does that make sense is that clear enough obviously I've, I've got one color texture on me but um, th that's why we have that three because we need to be able to link multiples in that and when we need to do that obviously we need to have a little bit of a daisy chain because obviously that piece between this wire and that wire is only in this situation it's only a little bit of cable if your valves as Scott was saying you've got valves that might be in their own individual boxes it's not as big a deal because you, all we do with our common is we bring the common back in and where we cut the cable you've effectively got common twice so you would cut that cable and the two whites come back up and then you grab your station so you've still got that then continuing down that you know might be 20 meters away down to the next one however in a valve box you don't want to have all five cables cut we only want to be dealing with that one so i normally just grab some off cut and grab a, a link of that and and we daisy chain accordingly so what i like to do and a lot of people don't i've seen this not get done is people get the wire joiner or sorry their wire into their wire joiner and this has been stripped and they'll put that in through the through the gel and so the end now that's you can see there i've actually got that red far enough in 
that it's inside the, the protection. Only just though, prob probably still not quite enough. And what we see is people have stripped that back this far and then gone and put a wire joint on there. But I'm like, but your copper's still exposed back here still. So it's still gonna corrode. So your joins happened, yes, but it's gonna corrode still. So what I tend to say to people is when we're doing a wire join, I get my valves and I cut that cable clean like that. And my station wire, I do the same thing. As clean as I can with a pair of pipe cutters. And the idea behind these wire joiners is they actually have a metal bridge which you'll see inside underneath the blue there's a, like a metal like bar in there and that's what's causing that electrical bridge that cuts through the plastic sheath of the actual cable and so then it's going to it cuts through that and then connects into the actual metal or the copper of the actual cable there for you so what we want to do when we're doing a wire join is we grab that this is going to be our active wire, so it's our coloured wire that we're using for the valve. We're getting our, the openings of this and we're putting our active wire from the valve in and our active wire from the controller in. And we put that all the way in. It's a bit hard to tell, but you can see there's actually colour coming all the way to the top. We want to get that wire all the way to the top of the actual um, like past the actual uh, bridging point there as well. Because obviously if it's not enough, it's just gonna fall, fall out as well. Once we've got that in and we're holding that there, and I'll, I'll, I'll come around and do a couple of joins as well with you guys, but we've got that there. We basically, with a pair of multi-grips or a pair of pliers, we wanna come through on the top of that and we just press tight. That, that will come through, you'll see a bit of the gel come out and that connection's done. And see, I haven't actually had to strip any of that wire. I've just done clean cuts on these and that's actually gone through and connected into that for me. When we do the same thing for our our white, and what I'm gonna do here to make my daisy chain, I'm gonna cut a bit of this cable to do it. So we, now, because we've obviously got our, our green wires being done, and then we're wanting to link our, our common up to, the, to be able to do all of our valves. So we grab our white, we put that in, in the same thing. We grab our daisy chain. Sorry, no we don't. We grab our um, common wire, the other wire that was sitting there for that valve, and put that into the middle slot. Well, it doesn't really matter, but you can put that into the middle slot. And then we've got our third slot is our daisy chain. Now that's going to be my common link to be able to then let me go to my next valve. So we do that. I then grab my multi-grips. And that, and that join's done. Now effectively that, other than needing to still connect all my other valves up, that, because that's actually been linked now back to my main field wire, Station one would turn on now if I wanted to turn this on, which let's test that I've done a right connection. You heard that click, obviously running now. That's buzzing. Yep, so that connection's all good. That's a waterproof connection. We're completely fine with all of that. That can stay in the ground for 25 years and never, hopefully never be a problem. Um, a lot of the time I tend to, because that can tend to look like a bit of an improvised homemade explosive device sitting in a valve box with wires and colours going everywhere, I tend to try and keep a little bit of this sort of stuff a bit neater so we tend to, when I do installs I'll, I'll get all of that and I'll put a cable tie around that just to keep it neat and then I'll do the next valve and then I'll kind of bunch all them together and do another cable tie so you've sort of got that all tucked neatly away in a valve box and then if you ever needed to work on it you can just pull that up and actually see what's going on if you need to service it you can cut your cable tie but you can actually 
you don't have a field of wires sitting there with redbacks running around and all that sort of stuff. So 